Hi, this is Brandon. Today, I'm going to show you how to UV anything in five simple steps. I'm going to be unwrapping this sword that I've made for the upcoming game, Ink Inside. Currently, there's a free demo on Steam out now, and the full game will be out later this year. See the link in the description below. All right, now the very first thing I want to do, the very first step, maybe even a half step, hey, we'll call it a pre-step. We want to run Mesh Cleanup. Under the Mesh tab, Cleanup, select this dialog box. Now, I have another video with the link down in the description. I go into this a little more in depth, but you want to run this and make sure your model is clean first. So I'm going to select my whole model, run apply. Looks good. Close that and move right along. All right. Now let's access the UV panel, which I can do up in the UV tab with the UV editor. But I really don't like working around this window. It's kind of a pain. So I prefer to go to workspace in the upper right hand corner and change this from general to UV editing. This is great because I've got my model on one side and my UVs on the other. All right, now our first step in UVing anything really is we need to create new UVs. Now the best way to do this is select the entire model or with the outliner, I can access all of my pieces up here. Once the entire model has been selected under the create tab in the UV toolkit, open that drop down and select camera based. And this will give me brand new UVs based on the camera view itself. All right, now that I've got some UVs created, if I right click and go to edge mode, I can now begin selecting and cutting my edges. If I double click an edge loop, it will select an entire edge loop. It'll go all the way up and around. Now for this, I can also have symmetry on. Symmetry works great for selecting, but anything else with UVs, it actually gets in the way. So I will turn that off here in just a moment. So now that I've selected the, this edge loop across the top of the blade, I go to my UV panel, and now that brings us to our second step, which is cut UV edges. Now these buttons over here can work with this, but I personally like the hotkey shift, right click, cut, which works really quite well. Now this takes us to our third step, right click UV shell, select my UV shells, and then under the unfold tab, go to, you guessed it, unfold. That didn't seem to change too much, but if I grab both these shells, hit W and bring this over. If I marquee select, I grab them both. If I just click, I grab one. Now I have two UV shells I can actually begin to work with. All right, so now I'm gonna repeat steps two and three throughout the rest of the model. Right click, go to edge mode. And if I double click on an edge, as long as there's not a triangle, it will select an edge loop. I can also shift select to select multiple edges. Go back to my UV side, shift right click cut. Since Maya is panel specific, if I do shift right click, it brings up different options over here versus over here. All right, go to UV shell and unfold. Right click back to edge mode, double click to select an edge loop, shift double click to select another. And now I know on this cylinder here, I need to not only select the caps, but I'm also going to need to have something to unfold this whole piece. So I like to select the bottoms where I can. I try to find edges that are hidden as best I can. Go back to this side, shift, right click, cut, UV shell, grab these, unfold, right click, edge mode, and continue moving around the model. I like to think about when I UV and I'm looking for edges to cut, I imagine a cardboard box and what I would do if I wanted to cut the edges and lay that cardboard box out flat. And then I will go back to the UV side, shift, right click, cut, and sometimes I will skip step three and just continue moving around the model and work on step two for a little while. Kato agrees, he's all right with that. And I'm looking for good places to cut anything that if I were to leave would prevent the model from unfolding. Grab that up in there, grab this one here already, shift right click cut my other panel. Once these are cut, I can then go to right click UV shell. And if I'd like, I can select all these UV shells and do this step all at once with unfold. This brings me to our fourth step, which is going to be layout. Under the arrange and layout tab, I can hit layout. Now this does a few things for me. This not only spreads them out, but it also creates a consistent texel density. Texel density is the relative size of each of these UV shells to each other and to the model itself. Now, the way these are laid out is not good. Auto UV, does not do a great job. This is not at all something usable. We are certainly not done. This takes me to our fifth step, which is I need to orient these shells and lay them out by hand. 
Now, if I select an internal edge, I'm just going to shift click and find these edges in the middle of the UV shell. The reason I do this is if I find an outside edge, it also selects an outside edge of another shell. By finding an inside edge, it only affects the shell I am working with. Click around here, and I still have symmetry on for this step, which is fine. Make sure we've got everyone selected. And now, also under the Arrange and Layout tab, I can hit Orient to Edges. Oh, looks like I missed a few. I can also hit the G key. G is in great job, and it will redo my last action. If I go back to View Shell, and I select everything, I can hit Layout again, and it will relay these out. Right click Edge Mode, forgot another one. Grab this center edge, orient to edges, looking good. This shell doesn't look quite correct. Something's wrong here. I know I cut this off. Hmm. All right, I'm going to go to this button here, the isolate select. Ah, I forgot some faces up in there. So I am simply going to go to face mode, marquee select this top edge, shift, right click, drag across the middle to deselect that. And now I'm simply going to hit delete. And that takes care of that. Now, looking at these edges, I have more edges here than I do down here, and I decided I don't need those. So I'm going to shift, double click, an edge loop, and do every other one. Shift, double click, shift, double click, shift, double click. Now, if I go to shift, right click, delete edges, I now deleted every other edge, and there's no loading vertices left over. And these now match top to bottom. All right, now because I modified something, I need to re-unfold this. I'm gonna right click UV shell, select that UV shell, and it would be smart to grab its other piece and go back to unfold. Now I'm going to edge, select center edge, orient edges. Now the next thing I do is I am going to go in and lay these out by hand. All right, I'm going to turn off symmetry because I want these to be facing the same direction. So because this is facing up in the model, I'm going to hit E as in excellent. And if I hold down the J key, J as in just great, hold that down while I rotate it up, it will snap in 15 degree increments. Hit W to grab this UV shell. I'm going to stack these two UV shells. Part of the purpose in this is it makes it easier to paint, makes that a little bit faster because I just paint something once instead of twice. Also, it saves space in my zero to one space. And here, every pixel counts. I want to save as much space as I possibly can without losing interest or variation. If there's anything in my model I am never going to see without having to turn the model around, I'm never going to see this these pieces at the same time. I might as well stack them. So I can shift click, maybe pull these out to the side and hit stack shells. Also same with this main blade here, we can do this as well, stack shells. I'll just scooch this over a bit. Anything else here that I know I'm going to stack? I can stack these shells, but something I want to be cautious of actually really quickly. With a shape like this, I know exactly which way it's facing, but with these, I want to make sure that neither of these is upside down. So I'm going to go to right click edge and I'm going to select the top edges on my model and then look here. Now by selecting both top edges in the model, they should be both facing upwards. This one, however, is not. If I were to go and stack these and then paint these, one of them would show up incorrectly. I'm going to hit W, and I know because this edge was facing this direction, I'm going to start on this side, hold down J, and rotate it upwards. And I do this because I swear it creates this optical illusion where it looks like it's rotating backwards. If I go back to edge mode, sometimes it will stay selected. Double check that, up, up, looks good. Grab them both, stack shells, beautiful. Maybe I'll put all my stack shells here for now. Uh, I will obviously move them all back over here in a moment, but we'll do this for just a minute. Now these over here, let's select all of these, get these out of the way for a moment. All right, so I'm gonna go to edge mode and do the same thing. I'm going to check and make sure these are all facing the right direction. Hey, three out of four, not too bad. This hit E, start on this side, J, rotate up, back to edge mode, beautiful. Now I could go and stack all of these, but I want to create a little variation in my model, and I do want to stack something to save some space, but I don't want to stack them both. I want a little variation in the texture from the side to side of the model. So I'm going to go to the back of the model, and I'm going to shift select. So I kind of have these two diagonal pieces selected, and now I'm going to stack those. 
I'm also going to do the opposite here. Okay, shift click and stack those two shells. This way I am still saving space, but I get more variation in my model. All right, and now I'm gonna continue rotating all of these shells and I'm gonna speed this up a little bit so you don't have to watch paint dry. Oh, hi, Kato. Thanks for joining us for some UVs today. Are you excited about UVs? Really? I'm so glad to hear that. Okay, looking great. Now, if I go and marquee select over everything and I hit layout, it puts everything back in my zero to one space, but it unstacks anything that I had stacked. Sometimes this is just necessary to reset the texel density. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to restack things, but that's just part of the process sometimes. I'm going to shove this one all the way in the corner. All right, so I'm going to restack some of these leftover stackable UVs. And then I'm also going to start to bring everything back into the zero to one space and lay it out by hand, scale things up a little bit and just get the best fit that I can out of this. Guaranteed, I can always get a better UV layout if I pack this by hand versus using the auto layout. At this point, it really is just a bit of a game of playing Tetris. I just start to move things around and look and see what can fit where. Let's just see how we can Tetris fit this in. All right, now if I want to line all these up, I can arrange these and align them to the left by hitting this button right here and it will snap them all together. I'm starting to notice as I bring these things back around, I have a lot of negative space in here, a lot more than I am going to need by far. So I'm going to select everything, and if I hit the D key, D is in dig it, I can move the gizmo around. If I hold X, it will snap to the grid. I'm gonna hit R for scale, and I'm going to scale this up, and I'm going to scale it so that my biggest piece just barely fits in here. Also a fun trick, if I use my middle mouse button, redo that last scaling action by sliding my middle mouse left and right. It's pretty close. All right, that's a little better. Although I still have a lot of really empty, unused space here. Next thing I can do is actually go and grab everything, hit my D key again. If I put this down in the corner, I'm scaling in one direction. It's a little easier for me to manage and see what's moving around here. I'm gonna just redo this and check and see, but let's try it out. Hit W, back to my move tool. And let's just start kind of moving things around again. And really at this point, it is just a game of playing Tetris. I'm just moving things around and seeing what's gonna fit where. Now, like I said, I can go in and reposition this. Oh, hi, Kato. Still hanging out? Yeah? You like UVs, Kato? You do? Laying out UVs is the best. And I literally am just nudging things, but make, make it a game, like, have fun with it. All right, well, I would say that's looking pretty good. Now, something I can do to check, because I did upscale these UVs. And I would say in doing this, proceed with caution. I don't wanna go and upscale something that is going to have a huge difference in texture, because this literally changes the resolution of my texture per parts of my model. One way to check this is these buttons up top. This will assign a checkerboard texture to my model. I need to turn this off up here for this to show up. As I look at these, these aren't too terribly different. Even though I scaled these up a little bit, these squares are still fairly close to those. There, there's a difference for sure, but this isn't too terribly bad. And this way I'm getting the most use out of my zero to one space over here. So I think this is looking pretty good. I can't wait to get this thing textured and get it into our game. You'll see this Claymore sword in ink inside, link in the description. Hope to see you there. All right, well, that's about the bare bones of it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us, Kato.